Look at this bad boy. The M1919A6 Browning. That's a whole lot of numbers, but in reality, all you need to know is that this is an iconic machine gun from World War II, named of course after its creator, John Browning. The Browning was a 30 caliber medium machine gun, which was not only used during the Second World War, but also the Korean War and even the Vietnam War. In terms of what we've got in Battlefield 5, well, we've got a light infantry weapon, but the gun also served other roles such as a mounted machine gun, aircraft gun, and even an anti-aircraft gun. There are supposedly a lot of M1919s in service to this day, after they were rechambered for the 7.62 NATO rounds. The M1919 was actually based off an earlier gun, You'll recognize it, the M1917. The 17 version was a water-cooled machine gun. However, the 19 is air-cooled. If you played BF1, you will remember the M1917 Browning being added to the game. It had a very unique look to it, and it came a little later in the game's life cycle. Just to confuse you a bit more though, the M1918 is more commonly known as the Browning Automatic Rifle, and we know a lot of people would love to have the BAR in the game. During the war, while the BAR was a great rifle and portable, it only had a fixed barrel and a 20 round mag. As such, the M1919A6 was produced. There were a lot of variations of this gun, as you can guess from the A6 at the end. But this version of the gun tried to replicate elements from German weapons such as the MG34 and the MG42. And the A6 saw combat first in 1943, so well into the war. Interestingly, the M1919 was originally designed for use with tanks, and in total, there were six variations of the gun. Browning certainly didn't make it easy with all of their weapon variants. I mentioned earlier that the 19 is a medium machine gun, and thankfully Battlefield 5 has a category all of its own for those guns, and so that's where it fits in the support class. It's got quite a lot of top competition in that class though, the S2200, the M1922MG, the VGO, and of course the MG42 and MG34, those German weapons that the Browning tried to replicate. In terms of the stats of the gun, it's got a rate of fire of 600, which isn't the highest of the MGs. In fact, it's actually quite low and the lowest of all the medium machine guns currently in the game. The MG42, for example, well, that's the buzzsaw, and that default rate of fire is 981, which can then be increased to a whopping 1200. That's double the default of the Browning. That's not insignificant, although to get the weapon to that state, you will have to sacrifice your magazine. It's worth noting that you can upgrade the firing rate of the Browning in the specs, but it does only take it to 670. Not a massive leap forwards when you think about it. Rate of fire isn't everything, but when you're using an MMG, and you've got a gun like the MG42 that's so fast firing, you have to ask the question, why would you use anything else? The answer seems to be a familiar one when it comes to the Pacific guns. The Browning is not the quickest firing MMG, but somehow it's still really nice to use. One thing that it's got going for it is that it's quite stable, and while most of the time you are going to be attempting to use the bipod or go prone, it still feels really steady, even when using the aimed fire. I imagine one of the reasons for that is indeed the lower rate of fire, so it's a trade-off really. It's not the most accurate MMG either. On pure stats, that reward goes to the S2200, but in reality, does a small amount of accuracy really matter when you're lying prone and holding mouse one on a group of enemies? I don't really think it does. One of the biggest pluses of the Browning though is the magazine size, because it's substantial. You've got 250 rounds available to you, which means you're not going to be reloading this beast very often. The MG34 can go up to 100 rounds with the extended mags. The MG42 starts off as a 50 round mag, but then can be specced up to a 250. But the difference with the Browning is that by default, it's 250 as standard without the need for any upgrades or specializations. As with the other medium machine guns, you can't put any medium or long range scopes on the gun because, well, let's face it, it would be even more overpowered at those ranges if that were the case. You can throw a one times or even the AA sights on it, which are actually a 1.25 zoom, not bad. And that's the one that I personally found myself using. So let's take a look at those specializations then to see exactly what we're going to be doing with those 250 bullets on offer. I went all left side with my specs this time, mostly because I really wanted the extra rate of fire from the left hand tree. 
And this left me with Recoil Buffer, which reduces vertical recoil a bit, which honestly, I don't think you really need with these guns, but the alternative is to have extra reload speed. Come on, let's face it, we've got 250 rounds. Unless you've got compulsive reloading syndrome like me, you're not reloading very often. I can't be the only one that does that though. Next up is the Light Bolt, which increases the rate of fire to 670. Definitely makes the gun a bit more deadly, so I think it's a good spec to take. And then to finish, we have the flashless propellant, which reduces muzzle flash and then the chrome lining, which improves the gun's overheating. And that can definitely be an issue when you're trying to fire off all 250 rounds. While all that ammo does sound appealing, you can't just hold mouse one the entire time and just Rambo around though. These guns do overheat after a short amount of firing. Having the chrome lining does improve that though, and your gun will overheat 33% slower with that. And it makes a big difference, to be honest. The other option, of course, is high velocity bullets, which helps you hit moving targets at a distance a bit easier. The Browning, really, there's not any big surprises with this gun. The specs are pretty similar to the other medium machine guns, as are the way that they operate. They all look unique and they all have their own heritage, but overall they play mostly the same way. The Browning isn't the best of the bunch on paper, but it's still fun to use. In the long run though, when I'm in the mood for some machine gunning, I'm not sure that I'd pick the Browning over the MG42. I'm not sure it's got enough going for it for me to do that. Same mag size as the MG42 when you spec it out. And while it does have better control, when you're lying prone just mowing players down, that extra control isn't really noticed all that much. Plus, the MG42 fires almost one third quicker a monster. I do like the look of it though and I had fun using it so if you haven't given the Browning a go and you like your medium machine guns then now's your chance to hop onto the Pacific, get yourself in a bunker and some sand in your shoes. With that said I will leave it there for today guys. Let me know your opinion on the Browning down in the comments below. Leave a like if you liked the video, a dislike if you didn't. Subscribe for more and I'll see you in the next one.